What's up guys, breaking news. Zwift Academy Road 2021 finalists announced. So I'm gonna be going through the men's finalists. There's five of them. Let's have a look and see who they are and see what we can find out about them. I'm not gonna do the women's because uh, I don't really know who they are, whereas I already know some of the men, so it makes more sense to do that. So let's have a look through. From the top of the list here, we've got Alex Bogner. Now, interestingly, there's three Australians, two of which are on Nero Continental, the team I'm on. Um, and then there's a South African, a Dane, and then another Australian who's on another team up on the Sunshine Coast, another continental team. So let's have a look through Alex Bogner, first rider. Bit of a younger rider. I think this is the youngest rider in the finalists, so 19 years old. Um, let's have a look through. So we're on the pro cycling stats here. Um, ACA Pro Racing haven't submit their rider photos on PCS yet. Um, shout out to Peter Livingston for showing me how to do the, the full PCS stalk. Um, the, uh, as, as a 19 year old, Alex isn't going to have as many starts in UCI ranked events, which we would um, show up on pro cycling stats. The domestic racing in Australia, besides nationals, doesn't show up on here. So it's going to be a bit harder to see his results. But um, so not too much I can see from here. All I've got really is under 23 men's road race from this year where he came 35th. Um, Alex Bogner name stands out for me because he did, uh, he was very competitive in the, the national road series in Australia, Zwift series. So the national road series ran a Zwift series and I saw Alex's name pop up a lot there. So obviously, um, very good on Zwift and yeah, he's, he, he was popping up in that. So probably expected that he was going to do well in the Academy. Um, so that's the first rider there, Alex Bogner, youngest rider in the Academy, probably also one of the reasons why, um, there's not so many road results popping up here. Because, yeah, as a younger rider, it's harder just to, to get those results, those runs up on the board. Next rider, we've got Byron Munton from South Africa. So let's pull up the PCS. Um, actually, let's take a look at his Instagram. Oh, let's take a look at his Instagram first. So Byron Munton, so he's the two-time South African under-23 time trial champ, which is pretty impressive. Um, and he ride, he's riding for a continental team at the moment. So to be eligible for Zwift Academy, you can't be a pro. So you can't be on a world tour team or a pro team, or pro continental team. But you can be on a continental team, which isn't really professional because most continental level riders aren't being paid. So you can be on a UCI continental team like this team he's on here or like Nero Continental is and still be eligible for winning the Zwift Academy because you're not, you're not paid, you're not a professional. So um, this is him here. Uh, he was he just joined this team this year. Um, so here's, here he is in his time trial position. That's the South African under-23 time trial skin suit. Um, pretty interesting. But let's have a look at his pro cycling stats. See what sort of road results he's got against his name. So he just joined this continental team this year, 2021. So you can see his standout result. Two times national championships of South Africa under 23 individual time trial, 2019 and 2020. Um, what, you know, what's the strength of the South African time trial fields? I'm not too sure. Let's have a look. If we go into the one, so he won it most recently in 2020. So we can see here first place. But if we actually click through to the event, we can see who, who who's he been racing against. Um, geez, he's demolished this. So he's, he's won this by, so he's averaged nearly, assuming this is accurate, He's averaged nearly 49k an hour, and he was a minute and 16 seconds ahead of the second place, so he's demolished it. And Mark Oliver Pritzen for NTT Conti team, okay. That's, so he was, this rider was on the NTT Conti team, and uh, who is this rider? Oh, it's okay. So he, and then he joined the the Quebecer um, team what result? Any any standout results for this rider? Oh, he was the he was the he was the South African national road race champ. Okay, pretty impressive. One or two are here. GC. Um, okay, let's let's not get too sidetracked. So, um, no, maybe not the most stacked field, but you no, know, to to put a minute sixteen seconds into someone who's South African road race champ is pretty impressive. Uh, any other results? So this year he would have done some racing because he's on that contest. Yeah. So this is. Pretty actually, this is a lot of races for a continental team. Um, what have we got here? Anything standing out? Second in mountains classification in the footsteps of the Romans. Not sure what race. I've never heard of this race before. Uh, someone from Tyrol KTM won it. 
then he came in at second. Oh, okay, so only five points. Uh, how many stages was this race? Um, oh, it was only a two-stage Okay, so only a two-stage race, but, um, you know, that, that is a result um, there. Not much else to look at here. So, you know, some, some road results for Byron here. Um, so, yeah, pretty pretty good. Good to see someone from South Africa up in the mix. All right, back we've got next rider, Cooper Sayers, teammate of mine. Uh, let's have a look. So let's start. Actually, let's start on his Instagram page. Cooper Sayers, one underscore. Um, business and law, absolute flexing. Um, let's see here. So I know Cooper. So he's got a track background from a few years ago. Sort of an all-rounder. You can see he still does a bit of track work. Loves a crit, um, but still climbs well. Good sprint on him. Bit of a smaller rider. Um, not like a big sort of aerobic powerhouse. He's, he's more of an all-rounder. Um, anything stand out here? You know, let's if we look at his um, pro cycling stats, no big results here, um, but we can see the progression. I was actually looking at this before, and it's pretty impressive. So if we go 2018, under-23 Australian road race champs, DNF'd. 2019, same race, DNF'd. In 2020, under 23 road race, 18th. Good improvement, well done. This year, 2021, under 23 men's road race, 5th. So that's like, that's a very good progression. Um, and then 5th in the under, like coming 5th in the under 23 road race in the, in Australia is, is impressive. If we look at some of the riders here, like... Um, Rudy Porter, Carter Turnbull, I think he got like fourth or fifth in the World Under-23 Time Trial Championships that was on like a month ago. Rudy Porter, these guys all did two at 11 here, I think, besides Tom Benton. Um, so strong rider. Jensen Plowart, he signed he signed for a team, I think, for next year. Um, good uh, in the Australian track team. Um, so yeah, like certainly a super strong field. Matt Dinham did um, two at 11 here this year, did pretty well. I think he came like maybe top 10. So yeah, strong field. So so to have that progression coming fifth is pretty impressive for Coop there. On Zwift as well, did really well in the um, the Zwift National Road Series. So yeah, bit of an all-rounder and good to see him up there in the results. Next rider, the Dane, Mads Rabeck. Let's bring up the, let's start on the Insta again. So 25 years old. Uh, so just going back, actually, Cooper is 22. Um, so second youngest, I think. Um, and here we've got Mads, 25 years old. Actually, back to the Instagram. Mads, 25 years old, um, living in Denmark. Uh, let's have a look. Anything of interest here? Not too much that we can see here. So let's go to the PCS. Um, and the main thing here we can see is good a good racing experience. Like he's been around for, you know, his PCS is going back to 2012. <laughs> so... Big racing experience. He's been on a con he's been on Conti team since 2014, and then he's doing big races. I mean, this is the benefit. I'll get onto this later because there were some comments on this Swift um, Inside article, which I'll get into. But you know, one of the main differences between some of these riders in Europe and the riders in Australia is that they have access just to more races. So even this year, I mean, he's done Danish National Road Race. He's done Tour of Denmark, massive race. He's done Tour of Norway, massive race. Um, so what else has he done? Anything else? A bunch of 1.2s, 2.2s. So a big like this is a big racing calendar for someone on a Conti team. Um, any standout results that I can see here? Um, okay, top 10 on a stage of Tour of Denmark this year. Actually, where was that? Let's have a look. So Tour of Denmark. So we came ninth on this stage. Uh, won the mountains classification at this race in France. Was there any other good riders in here? Uh, who's he rolled? Uh, Avolo, it's a decent team. Leopard Pro Cycling, uh, Gage Hecht, he's a good rider. Um, nothing to stand out there, but let's go back to Tour of Norway. And no, it was Tour of Denmark, top 10 on a stage. Like, th th that's a big race. There's like a whole bunch of World Tour teams here. So let's see this stage. Um, won by your boy, Remco Evenpole, Tosh van der Sander. Uh, Mike Turnison, Mads Pedersen. I mean, this is like this is stacked and a long stage as well. This is 220k stage, and here is Mads Rabeck. Uh, looks like if we look at the time splits here, all over the road. Group at 320, two riders at 321. They must have got a small gap, and then Mads has won this small bunch kick. 
you know, rolling five of five people here. And who are these riders? Is Rasmus Tiller for Uno X, absolute weapon. Michael Goggle for Quebec and Next Hash. Julian Bernard, Trek Segafredo, uh, riding well at the tour. Like big names, Soren Crow Anderson. So that's far out. That's an that's an impressive result. You know, to get a, to roll a top ten on a 220k stage at the Tour of Denmark, um, very impressive. So interesting rider there, one to keep an eye on. Um, pretty well experienced. All right, final rider. We've got Mr. Sam Hill, another one of my teammates. Uh, let's go through the Instagram first. Here he is, Tour of Bathurst, the race. Won that one. Actually, that was an interesting race. So this looks like he's, he's out sprinted all these guys, but he, he hasn't. So he's he was solo for like, I think, half the race. And then the bunch were like a couple of meters behind him and he won solo. And these guys were all sprinting and yeah, incredible to, to do all that and win by a couple of meters. Uh, shame we don't have any like, race footage of that that would be awesome to see um sammy here so he, he he won the zwift series the the national road series zwift um he won that overall pretty good so good zwift pedigree but also a bunch of road pedigree as well if we got here he's run the tour of brisbane national road series race this year like this year he's really hit his hit his stride clearly i would say probably the strongest domestic um road racer in australia and climber Let's go to the PCS. What can we see? So, standout result. I mean, top of the top. Tour of the Philippines. Brilliant. Stage win there. Um, that was awesome. Uh, so, but yeah, not so much. You can see, you can kind of see the difference here with the riders in Australia just not having access to that that high level of racing just because of the location. Um, anything else standing out here? You know, some decent results here like in um, New Zealand Cycle Classic. So, got fifth on a stage. And, and Sam, as well, similar to um, some of the other riders, like a big race history. So Sam's been around for a while. A um, bit of a slow burn for Sam, I think, admittedly. Like, um, it's taken him a while to uh, to progress, but now he's he's hit his stride. And he, as I said, he's, he's, he's absolutely flying. So um, good to see, again, that, that steady progression. So that's my uh, quick... Well, <laughs> not so quick rundown of those riders, but let's have a look here down below. Some of the comments here, um, Australian Sam Hill, after beating everyone in Downhill and Giro World Series. Now, yeah, so there's a, there's a professional mountain biker uh, called Sam Hill as well. So not to be confused with Nero Continental's Sam Hill. Um, might have to have a look. So they mentioned here uh, two of the standout for men and women. Um, standout for the men was Sam Hill did a huge 6.8 watts per kilo, 20 minute power. Um, which is extremely high for 20 minutes. But then there was a comment here saying, might have to have a look on the dual recording for that um, because there was a bit of a difference between the kicker and his asiomas. Um, yeah, I mean, Sam put in the description of all his rides on Strava the link to the dual recording. It's all on Zwift power. I mean, that's... I don't see how you could sort of say that's against him. He's, <laughs> that's the whole point of dual recording is you, you get to check stuff. So good on Sam for, for dual recording everything from the Zwift Academy, chucking it on Zwift power. Uh, that's what makes the whole thing a legitimate process. So yeah, a bit of a difference there. But ex again, that's that's why you dual record. Um, this comment here as well, I'd be really interested in knowing everyone's theories as to why every single year there is a huge portion of the Academy finalists that are, for the, for the men at least, from either Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa, is there an inherent Southern Hemisphere bias um, with the timing of the Academy? Hard time believing proportion of finalists coming from these countries is represented with overall zoo population. My thinking of this is it's more because of the, the, the desperateness of the riders in countries like Australia, South Africa, New Zealand. That's like one of the main opportunities to progress, to go pro, is through Zwift Academy. If you're a, race, if you're a rider in Europe, you have access to high levels of racing. Whereas in Australia, your opportunities are kind of limited. So guys will structure their season factoring in Zwift Academy and it'll be one of the main targets, if not the main target of the year, of the season. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, it's a matter of how much they want it. The guys in Australia, the guys in New Zealand, the guys in South Africa, they want it and they're putting in the work and um, structuring their year around it. And that's why you're seeing them come out and, and just have these dominant performances because... Um, they put they put more work in than the other guys that have other uh, road opportunities. But I mean, that was a pretty good mix of, of riders. So there was there was a there was a Dane there. I mean, there's no lack of road racing in Denmark, but obviously still an opportunity there. Um, and yeah, I mean, 
I guess you can't you can't hold it against the Aussies and the South Africans and the and the Kiwis for <laughs> taking the opportunity as it presents itself. If guys in America or in Europe aren't don't see it as a and as an opportunity, that's their loss. Um, that's that's how I see it anyway. So that's about it for this video, guys. Hope you got something out of it, and I'll uh, catch you in the next one.